During my time making Tesla videos here on YouTube, I have gotten a lot of different questions about Tesla, the Model 3, the Santa Range Plus, best charging practices, how to save money. The list goes on and on. And also down in the comments, I've seen a lot of misinformation and a lot of myths that need to be busted. So in this video, I'm answering some of the most popular questions I have gotten asked, busting some Tesla myths in the process. Let's break down 10 of uh, the biggest questions on Tesla and the Tesla Model 3, and finally put some of these false rumors to rest. Number one, all Teslas come with free, unlimited supercharging. As much as I wish I could say this was true, it's simply not true. Tesla did used to offer free unlimited supercharging for owners of the Model S and the Model X, the more premium, more expensive Tesla vehicles. But unfortunately, they do not uh, do this any longer with any of their newer vehicles. You can in fact still get free unlimited supercharging, I believe if you are buying a used Tesla that does have that, it's kind of grandfathered into that program. But if you go to buy a new Tesla right now, and I believe any new Tesla, this is not a exclusive just to the S or the X, uh, you have to uh, kind of pony up the cash to get uh, miles to supercharge. You can get 1,000 miles free if you use a referral, shameless plug, my referral link is down below for 1,000 miles of free supercharging, uh, but that's the only way to get free miles. If you do not uh, kind of take advantage of those 1,000 miles when you order the vehicle, you will get no miles for free and you have to pay. So take advantage of the free ones while you can. Number two, supercharging is or is not a reliable charging solution for Tesla owners. And this one is a little near and dear to my heart because I, for many months, for like over a year, uh, relied on supercharging as my main method to charge my vehicle. And uh, I think this question is a little complicated to answer and needs a couple of uh, different sub questions to break down in here as well. So I think it depends on a lot of things. If you are somewhere where superchargers are uh, very available, if they are abundant in your locale, then maybe it's a little bit easier to jump on the supercharger bandwagon and take advantage of these fast Tesla chargers. Uh, it is nice, like if you're in Southern California, there are superchargers everywhere. So they are very, you know, very much available and I can go to at least a couple, probably three or four within a 20 minute drive from where I live. Uh, but there's also kind of a flip side of this. It's like a double edged sword. Yes, there are many available, but it's only available because it's Southern California and there are many different Tesla vehicle owners who are around and want to take advantage of superchargers. So uh, the supercharging locations are plentiful, but there are many people that need to take advantage of those chargers. So a wait is not uncommon at all these days, unless you're going very early in the morning on weekdays, which typically is also kind of lately hit or miss, uh, you're going to have to probably wait, whether it's people trying to charge up before they go to work, people on the weekends, uh, whatever it happens to be, those chargers uh, often do fill up very quickly. So you're going to have to probably wait if you're in a populated area like Southern California, the Bay Area, just for a couple of examples. The other thing to keep in mind with supercharging is that it's expensive. It can be your primary method of charging if you can find one that's available and it's not a super big pain to have to wait, uh, but it's going to be expensive unless you have a bunch of supercharger miles uh, that you've racked up through referrals, you're going to have to pay anywhere from a couple of bucks to maybe 10 bucks to fill up. It's really going to depend on where you are and what the rate of electricity is and what Tesla's charging, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's certainly cheaper than gas, don't get me wrong, but it is not nearly as cheap as doing something like a home charger or charging at another public charging uh, station. Uh, it's a definitely uh, a premium experience and it's nice that it charges so fast that you are paying a premium price to use superchargers. Also, I see the argument that Tesla superchargers aren't made to be your home charger. They're really made more for road trips, though I'd argue that most people I see at superchargers here in SoCal are using these as their primary method of charging. Maybe that's just here in the LA area, but uh, I definitely know that superchargers on kind of the, the greater US are made to be kind of these pit stops you make to charge up your car, but in urban areas like SoCal, uh, they're quite often used as a main charging method for charging vehicles. So just something to keep in mind. But the primary method that many people say not to use a supercharger as your primary charging method is because it degrades the battery, which I cannot really argue for or against. I'll get into that more in a little bit, but it does take some life out of your battery if you supercharge constantly. Just keep that in mind, but again, more on that in a bit. Number three, you need to have full self-driving to really take advantage of your Tesla and all the things that your vehicle can do. And I understand that if you paid the thousands of dollars for full self-driving, you should enjoy your purchase. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Enjoy those really cool, uh, kind of unique, 
uh, software and hardware advantages that you only get with full self driving. But I don't think it's something you should push and push on new owners or prospective owners or even long time owners like myself who don't care for it. Uh, I don't think it's really fair to push that on those who don't want to buy it. I've made the video countless times on why I don't think full self driving is worth it. I'll link to it up here, uh, but I just don't think in its current iteration, it's really worth it. Uh, so I don't think you need to have full self driving and spend the money to really get the full Tesla ecosystem and the full Tesla uh, advantage of having the car and the full experience, anything like that. I will say that I do think autopilot is an important part of the Tesla experience. And I think the change uh, or the jump rather to go from no autopilot to autopilot is much bigger, worlds bigger than going from autopilot to full self-driving. Full self-driving is fantastic. It's really cool. It's a great uh, subset of features, but I don't think it is necessarily worth it right now or a must need buy to take advantage of the full Tesla experience. You're going to be just fine without it. Number four, what is my current 100% battery charge? I get this question all the time, uh, whether people wanna know about how the degradation is on a standard range plus, or because I use superchargers a lot, everyone always wants to know what my battery health is currently at. So I'll tell you when I took delivery of my standard range plus in July of 2019, the promised 100% battery capacity from Tesla was 240 miles. These days, a 100% charge is closer to like 218 to 220 for me. Uh, so I've lost about 20 miles from the full 100% charge uh, I could achieve when I first took delivery of the vehicle. Now, I don't know if this is due to regular wear and tear on the battery, if this is excessive degradation due to my constant use of a supercharger, I'm not sure. And quite frankly, I am not educated enough. I have not done enough research and looked into the numbers enough to give you a, an answer definitively one way or the other. I'll tell you, it really doesn't bother me. I do charge my car to 100% quite a bit, though I know that's going to hurt the battery. I do still use superchargers quite a bit, which I know is not good on the battery. I know that, uh, but I'll tell you that the degradation was about 20 miles in the year and a half or so I've owned the vehicle. Not enough to really alarm me or to make me worried, but for all those wondering, that is what I'm currently at. And I'll keep you updated in future videos on what my battery health continues to be. Number five, Tesla does not offer any deals on their cars. This is pretty much true this is the case a uh, tesla is not like a traditional automaker they do not negotiate there is no haggling there's no kicking the tires that's just not how they work the price you see on the website is the price you're going to pay the only time i've heard of specials have been end of the quarter where tesla is trying to move inventory and get rid of some cars where they're a little bit more likely to have some wiggle room in certain fees and stuff like that and obviously if you buy an inventory car this is another way for you to buy a somewhat new sometimes almost pristine tesla that someone has either returned or was a showroom car that you're able to get for uh, a little bit of money knocked off. This might have a thousand miles on a couple hundred miles, uh, could have been used as a test drive car. Whatever the case may be, it still has a fantastic warranty that Tesla is backing, it still is in really good shape, but it's a way for you to save a couple thousand bucks off the price of a brand new Tesla. So check out inventory cars and uh, you know possible showroom cars or test drive cars if you're looking to save a little money on a Tesla purchase. Number six, the cable that comes with my Tesla is the only cable I need to charge my car. This is kind of partially true. The cable that you get when you take delivery of your new Tesla is the cable you're going to use to charge the car. It has kind of this Tesla brick on one side. It has the uh, little cable on the other side that goes into your car to charge the vehicle. That is important, but the actual wall uh, adapter is different, whether you're using a 120 volt outlet or a NEMA 1450 outlet or 240 volt. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, outlet types depending on where you are in the world, the electrical rate, lots of stuff like that. So yes, that cable that you get with the car is very important. It's how you charge the car, but the other end of it, the plug side is going to depend on what type of electrical outlet you're plugging into. So in my case, it's a NEMA 1450. Uh, Tesla does not uh, give you the NEMA 1450 adapter when you buy the car, at least they haven't in the last year and a half or so. So you're gonna have to buy that from Tesla directly for I think 20, 30 bucks. Uh, but the one that they give you with the car will work on any standard 120 volt outlet, though that is very, very slow. So yes, the cable that comes with the car is important and it works, but you're gonna need to probably buy an additional adapter depending on what wall socket you are using to charge your Tesla. Number seven, the Tesla app does not work without premium connectivity. 
That is false, that is not true. The Tesla app does work. The Tesla app is a fundamental part of the car. You paid for it, you get all the features of it. The app is full featured and will 100% work without premium connectivity. Uh, I made a full video on what premium connectivity is and what you can do without it and what you can do with it. Does that make sense? A uh, full video up here, uh, but the app is going to work no matter what. You can still remote control your car. You can still do all the controls for the AC and the climate and um, see its location and sentry mode and alarm and all that stuff. You still have full functionality of the app without having to pay for premium connectivity, uh, though it's more stuff in the car you lose if you don't pay for premium connectivity. So the app is still gonna work, but uh, you're gonna lose a lot of other functionality in the car if you don't spend that 10 bucks a month. But your app is gonna be just fine no matter what if you decide to pay for premium connectivity or you don't. Number eight, you need to buy all the features of your Tesla when you first purchase the vehicle. They cannot be added on after. Uh, this is partially true, uh, it takes a little explanation. So you actually can buy some things after the fact when you buy a Tesla. For example, uh, full self-driving. Tesla will happily sell you full self-driving for thousands and thousands of dollars and typically the price will go up the longer you wait to buy it. Uh, which is good in a sense because maybe you wanna wait or save up some money in order to buy it, which you can do but it's also a little bit of a disadvantage because you gotta pay the full amount. If you were to buy it when you bought the car, you can kind of roll that into a lease payment or roll it into the loan. You can of course put this on a credit card, I guess, when you bought it for full price, but you kind of have to front that cash all at once. Someone is paying that full amount where if you were to finance it over the car lease or again, the car loan, you'd be able to kind of split that payment up. So just something to kind of keep in mind with uh, full self-driving. Uh, but there's also a flip side. There are some things that you just cannot buy when you buy the vehicle. For example, uh, Standard Range Plus, it has rear heated seats you can pay within the app to unlock. There is nowhere in the configurator it says this. It doesn't give you the option to pay for an advance. You just have to pay for that uh, later on when you have the vehicle. Same goes for the little performance enhancement uh, for the long range Model 3s. Uh, that is an add-on, an additional option that you can buy later on that you don't have to buy when you buy the vehicle. In fact, you cannot buy it when you buy the vehicle. So some things to keep in mind that yes, you can purchase some things after the fact, it might just be a little bit more complicated to do so. Number nine, there is nowhere free to charge my car. That's simply not true. I know that it can be a little complicated, it can be tough, but I promise you there are ways to charge for free, if not for a very small amount. You wanna download an app called PlugShare. This is one of my favorites. It'll show you all the different charging stations around you that uh, will let you charge, some for free, some for paid. You can filter within the app and it actually will show you what the different uh, companies that runs it. Whether it's a charge point, whether it's an EVgo, all the different third-party companies, it'll show you what's around. Even outlets that are just available for you to plug into, even though it's a little bit slower, you can charge for free. Uh, this is a great way to kind of find some options that are more affordable. Uh, you can also use the third parties like ChargePoint, they do have free stations, you just have to do a little digging. So be sure to uh, scour the web, look through those apps, because there are some free chargers to be had, if not some that are very uh, relatively inexpensive and should get you a full charge for just a couple of bucks. And the last one, last but not least, my Tesla does not come with a manual. I've heard this over and over again, and it does come with some paperwork, but the full manual is with the car. It's actually on the car. You have to go into the settings to be able to read the manual, but better than that, the best manual for a Tesla I could think of is a video like this on YouTube, specifically my channel, if you understand a Range Plus or any other Model 3. I have tons of videos on this car, what it can do, uh, all the different features, some of the hidden features. Uh, so this is a shameless plug to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But in general, YouTube is a fantastic resource to find out all different things of Tesla vehicles, how they work, how they charge, different tips and tricks, and everything from the most basic mundane thing, like how to open the door, how to set up your phone with the car, to the most advanced kind of uh, different apps you can get to track your stats and different uh, other uh, mods you can do. And there's a wide range of free content here on YouTube that I definitely recommend checking out. Though if you do prefer to read just a regular old manual, you can do that, it's built right into the car. So there it goes. Those are some of my most popular questions answered. I've got a lot of those over and over again, so hopefully I can kind of put some of those questions to bed uh, for now, and also bust some myths that I've seen floating around on different comments and forums and user groups on different uh, things that Tesla can and can't do. Hopefully this clears some things up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.